Hey guys, today we are unboxing the Godox Wistro 8600 BM. If you haven't heard of Godox, they are a Chinese manufacturer that is producing a cohesive lighting system comprising of speed lights, monolights, and bare bulb units that all work together off of the same X1 radio controller. The 8600 here is a 600 watt strobe with an attached lithium ion battery providing a cable free, powerful, and portable system. The 8600 comes available in TTL and non-TTL versions. The TTL version costs about $750 and the non-TTL about $550. Both versions have high speed sync, a 2.5 second recycle time at their highest power, an LED modeling lamp, and come ready to be controlled by the X1 controller. Both systems offer a traditional sync port should you want to use an alternate trigger system. Another unique thing about the 8600 is that you have the option of using a flash head adapter. This cables a flash head to the bulb port, allowing you to decrease the weight at the top of the stand for added stability, or for an assistant to wear the unit as a power pack. The 8600 is an excellent alternative to the Profoto B1 or the Flashpoint Rove Light. The X1 radio trigger currently can control the TT685 speed light, the 8180 and 8360 bare bulb power pack units, as well as this 8600 BM. Okay, first we need to remove the head protector. There is actually a release right here, and then you move it towards you and pull that off the top. Now this is the Bowens mount. Uh, there's also a Godox version as well. There's actually some styrofoam in here too, so just kind of make sure all that's clear before you get any electricity going through it. Um, this is the flash bulb that actually slides right in here. Now you don't have to worry about touching the actual casing right here because it's just a glass covering. Um, traditionally you'd want to avoid touching that actual flash bulb right there because oils on your hand can uh, lead the bulb to explode. So for this instance we're okay though because it's completely covered which is nice it also protects the actual flash tube. Um, next we've got the lithium battery which goes right on the back here. Um, pretty easy just lining up the ports and sliding it down. There's also a release for the battery directly at the bottom of the unit. Press to hold for the on off button right here to the right of that. It's just a test button. Now if you want to control the power you can use this wheel right from the side. Um, so if you're using a different type of sync option um, you can you know set the power from that and it's really nice to have that wheel because you can really feel the uh, the clicks as you go go through it right here is basically the uh, high speed sync option so you can either turn it on turn it off you get this little indicator right here tells you whether you got it on or off so that's really nice um, i know there's been some complex systems for high speed sync and this one makes it really really simple for you to turn it on and off However, there is not, at least that I know of, an option to turn it on from the remote. However, it may just kick in automatically um, for Nikon for like an auto FP type thing. Below that, this is the LED. There are three levels of power. You can kind of see that bulb brightening and dimming as I go through them. Uh, this menu, Allows you to turn off settings like the uh, the sound, the fan, whether you want it to be auto. I'm not going to go through all the different menu settings, but you know it's kind of your typical monolight things. Lastly, the big thing is uh, the mode. It lets you go through the multi manual. Um, if you had TTL, this would be where you switch it to TTL. My system does not have TTL in it. Um, I chose not to purchase those. And uh, lastly. Let's put it back in manual. Um, this group and channel button, if you just click the group button, it allows you to cycle through the different groups, A through E. Um, if you hold it, it'll open up the channel, channel menu and you can cycle through and choose your channel to match it up with your uh, X1 trigger. Up on the top here, we have the um, optical slave. This is what would detect another flash. 
Uh, this right here is a USB port. I don't know why it has a Wi-Fi symbol, but it's definitely a USB port under there, as well as a traditional sync jack. Um, right here is kind of a battery indicator. Um, one thing I'm noticing though is that when I turn the actual unit on, um, I've got one of three bars, and on here I've got three of four. So a little bit of miscommunication there, but just something to note. And then right here is where you would charge the battery. Okay, right here is the X1 trigger. Mine has an N for the Nikon version. There is also a Canon version, obviously. Really, really simple trigger. Basically, this is the on button for the actual unit. This is the on button for the AF assist beam. On the back here, just kind of like a shutter control, um, you can go through all the different channels and groups. When you get in there, there's a group button to actually kind of control the power output. If you want to change the mode to TTL, if you have a TTL capable unit, um, or if you're using it in conjunction with a TTL speed light like the TT685. But basically you can go through the different groups um, this allows you to change your channel. Up top, I pretty much always keep mine in channel 1. Um, yeah, so it's really, really straightforward, simple system to use. It's nice that it also gives you a hot shoe with TTL pass-through right on top. For anybody who's an event photographer, that's great because, you know, sometimes you just need that fill flash on in case you're moving around. Other controllers like the TT622, you didn't really have that option. You had to kind of choose, do I want to control my lights or do I want to keep something on my camera? With this, you don't. The last thing I want to do is just kind of show it working with the X1 controller. So what I'm going to do first is go on the 8600 and we're going to switch that over so it's ready for the radio. We're going to switch the group to B and then we're gonna keep it on channel 10, that's completely fine. So right now we're gonna take our X1, and we're gonna move that up to channel 10. Now we're gonna go to group B, switch the mode till we get to manual, and as you can see that instantly flips to kind of whatever you had this one set at. So um, it instantly recognizes, which is nice because it doesn't need a pre-flash. Put that up to 1 16th. Um, as soon as we're ready to test it, it's gonna switch over to 1 16th, no pre-flash necessary, and uh, it's ready to go.